we just want to remind you that next week, Wednesday at 7 p.m. is the leadership meeting with Pastor Paul. Leadership training from our favorite leader. Can't beat that. We're also moving the next two weeks of Ripple Effect messages to 6 p.m. so that you can do both. Also, if you haven't, be sure you get out and vote today. Uh, voting ended yesterday. Be right back. Enjoy the message. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday night. Um, wow, this is crazy timing right now. Um, tonight, I'm going to talk about honor. And, you know, we uh, created this series and we put all the teachings in certain place um, without even planning it around um, the election. And when I realized the date and timing of this teaching, I, uh, I could tell that God was on it. So, um, yeah, talking about honor. And, um, you know, it's actually Tuesday today for me. I'm recording this prior and so I don't even know how the election um, has turned out. We might not even know by Wednesday today, uh, but um, one way or another, I'm just praying that God um, speaks to all of our hearts through this. And um, we just learn a little, bit of, a little bit more about how we can honor him um, by honoring other people. So I wanna begin by praying. I really feel like we, um, you know, we need to acknowledge the Holy Spirit in these times and invite him to be very active. Uh, in and through us. So Holy Spirit, we invite your presence right now um, into um, our homes, into our hearts, into um, our relationships, into current events, into this country. Uh, Father, I thank you that um, there's freedom where your spirit is. And so uh, we're yoked up with you tonight, God. Um, I pray that we would yield um, area in our heart to you, that we would give you more and more ground with every passing day, every passing year, um, that we would choose right now, tonight, to um, let your spirit evaluate our hearts. Um, God, you know us, uh, search us, um, show us if there's anything in us that um, we need to uh, bring into submission to your lordship. Uh, we, we give our hearts to you. We wanna do life your way. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, let's get into um, it. You know, what is honor? Um, honor is um, really, it's an attitude. Um, it's a lifestyle. It's something that we bring um, into relationships. It's really, it's um, kind of projecting value and worth on someone, um, esteem. And so it's important that, um, that we know what the word says about it. Uh, you know, God tells us specifically through the word um, that there are multiple positions and people to honor. And so I'm just going to rattle off a few of those. Um, we're to honor God. Okay, Revelation 4.11 says, Worthy are you, O Lord, um, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things. And that alone, I mean, is honorable. Hello. He's stronger. He's wiser. He's Lord. So he's worthy of our honor. Um, the word tells us to honor our father and mother. Uh, we know that. I'm not going to necessarily cite specific verses. You can find these. This is biblical. Go look um, for yourself if you're unsure. Um, we are called to honor the elderly also. Um, we're called to honor our leaders. And guess what? Um, lastly, I mean, this is going to cover it. We're called to honor all people. A couple of scriptures, though. Um, uh, Peter actually tells us in uh, 1 Peter 2.17 to honor the emperor, okay? Honor your leaders. Um, and at that time, um, literally believers were being persecuted for their faith harshly by the emperor. And so um, honor is not tied to our feelings and it's not tied to whether someone is honoring us, okay? It's something the Lord commands us to do uh, regardless of how we're being treated. Um, and you know, honoring all people, that's also in First Peter 2.17. Um, I checked on a lot of different translations and there, were, there was no way of getting around it. It was like all people, like people that we agree with, people, you know, um, who aren't 
Christians who don't hold our same worldview, um, our biblical worldview, we're still called to honor them. Um, you know, it all boils down to this. Um, and I kind of said this at the beginning, but we honor others because we honor God. So if we don't honor God, um, it'll be very easy to not honor people because people can get pretty ugly. Yikes. I had this at the very end, but I think I'm going to say it now. Um, I'm just going to drop this one on us. I'm kind of afraid that maybe uh, the world doesn't see Jesus, um, doesn't recognize Jesus, doesn't embrace Jesus because we don't honor or reverence God. Therefore, we don't demonstrate the kingdom as God would like it to be demonstrated. Okay, one of the main ways is loving your neighbor and loving God. Okay, if we are not loving our families and loving our neighbors and loving our enemies, we're not actually um, honoring God. Uh, and, and I just kind of want to start with that, like without getting attitudes and saying, oh, that's not true. Well, do you know what they did? And they're dishonorable, so I'm not giving them honor. Well, um, honoring someone is not contingent upon whether they're honorable, okay? They're not worthy. Well, guess what? I'm not worthy of much myself, okay? We can't get into a place of self-righteousness and think that it has anything to do with us and how great we are. And that's why we deserve what God has for us. That's why we're better um, because we're, we're just better people. Well, that's self-righteousness and that, that is literally like filthy rags to God. It means nothing. Okay? We are only righteous and we're only worthy of honor because of what Jesus did. And Jesus did that for everyone. Those in the faith, those outside of the faith. Um, you know, Jesus said in Matthew 25, 40, uh, whatever you've done to the least of these you've done to me. Okay? Uh, we need to be like Christ. Um, I love this. Bill Johnson said, um, a culture of honor is where you treat others how you would treat Jesus. Okay, and we, we would treat Jesus with the utmost respect. Um, and it's important we do that. I love this um, passage of scripture. I'm gonna read, but I'm gonna um, jump around a little because it's pretty long. Um, but it's out of Philippians chapter two. I'll start in three, um, uh, verse five. Actually, two, verse five, I'll start. It says, you must have the same attitude as Christ Jesus had. Uh, verse 7 says, He gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave. He was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God. He died a criminal's death on the cross. Verse 9, Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor, and he gave him the name above all other names. Skipping ahead now to verse 14, actually, I guess I'll read verse 12 here too. Dear friends, uh, you always followed my instruction when I was with you and now that I'm away, it's even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. He gives us the desire to honor people and he gives us the power to do it. Verse 14, do everything without complaining and arguing. So uh, there's some pretty big um, points in there. Okay, first of all, verse five said, have the same attitude that Christ had. Okay, then it said he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave. He humbled himself in obedience to God. God elevated him because of that to the place of highest honor. Okay, and then do everything without complaining and arguing. So we need to be like Christ in our expression of the kingdom. Okay, we need to be like Christ in how we express honor to people. Jesus was killed and he honored those even that took his life. He gave his life. Now, who deserves my honor? Um, you know, we just, we need to know that honor is something that I require of myself. It's not something I demand you give me. Okay, it's something I require of myself. It's something I call myself up into. So, it. Even when I'm feeling dishonored, I have a standard within myself of how I treat someone. Uh, our mind can get kind of crazy. It can get loud. It can get bossy. It can tell us how to respond. Um, I'm guilty of it. You know, when someone 
snarky with me, especially if I'm being gentle and kind and then they give me what I feel is a unnecessary response. Sometimes my gut reaction is like, how dare you? You know, inside I feel that. But what we need to be careful of is not making it about ourselves, okay? Their responses, rear, I've said this before to all of you, their responses rarely have anything to do with me. Um, honor, really, it's what's extremely important is that um, we remember that um, the way someone treats us, okay, I already said it, but it doesn't have anything to do um, with me. Now, um, I want to kind of start here. Uh, there's a couple really easy things. Um, Oh, I like this here. This is a great reminder. You know, it's the kindness of God that leads men into repentance. Uh, our honor and our kindness will soften the hardest hearts to receive the kingdom. Um, and when, when we get those kind of self-righteous attitudes, um, it's not actually going to produce anything. It's not, it's not going to change someone's mind. Right now in this um, climate of crazy <laughs> that we're experiencing, it's, it's really like no other. I just was talking with Pastor Paul about it the other day and I said, you know, I've only been alive for so many elections, so I don't actually know, um, has it always been this, this heated? Has it always felt this divisive? Um, you know, social media has only been around for, I don't know, a decade? How long, Jared? I don't know, about maybe like 10 years, not that long. So it's all new that we all have access to everyone's feelings and opinions. Um, but Pastor Paul said, you know, it's always been kind of, kind of intense, but it's it's definitely ramped up now. And I think I think it's a spiritual thing. But um, we need to remember. With that being said, you cannot fight a spiritual battle just with the flesh. Okay, you have to use spiritual weapons. Okay, we've learned about those. But um, really, the one I'm talking about tonight is honor. Um, you know, this. I just want to give some practical. Um, some practical things right now of how, how can we even engage in a conversation with someone who we're not in agreement with. Okay, Republican, Democrat, you know, we're in the middle, we don't know, we like this, we like that, we don't like this, we don't like that. We have conversations all the time with people that feel differently about topics. And the Lord spoke to me once. Um, I was working for someone and the Lord said, um, you two are very different people. I knew that. And he just said, what I want you to do is I want you to find things you can agree on. And by doing so, you earn favor with people. And then you guess what? You build some relational equity so that you actually can have conversations. If there's no relational equity, that means if you haven't built any relational trust, um, you won't have the place to speak into someone's life. And so many times we get on Facebook and we don't know the people we're talking to. And so it's so much easier to dishonor them because they're just a face and a name. You mean nothing to me. I don't care if I crush you. Matter of fact, I'd like to. And um, it can be very dangerous. Uh, so when two people are talking and neither one is listening, it's the most destructive type of conversation or confrontation that can happen. Um, and it becomes extremely hard sometimes to even exit those conversations. So I've learned by error, personal error, I need to, we need to just not even start them. If the, if the person we're about to engage with is not going to listen, it's best just to back out because we're going to say something hurtful or we're going to get hurt. Um, and so we just need to just like, not going to go there. It's okay to exit a conversation. Um, you know, only choose to engage in a conversation if there are hearers, listeners present. Um, and, and it's sad because sometimes we want people to hear so bad and we think maybe if I just explain it a different way. You can try if you're doing it with honor to truly educate, not to shame and crush someone and to say, you suck and you need to, you're wrong, I'm right. Um, if, if we're going into it like that, it's just, it's never going to produce what we hope it does. Um, I'm just scrolling down. I'm just scrolling here real quick. Command myself to bring respect and honor regardless of my perception and their perception. That's important. Um, where, where was this? Oh, let's talk about something. I'm just going to give an example real quick. It's kind of an intense um, topic and even some of us listening. I know among Christians, a lot of us feel the same way about this, but some people really don't. And, um, you know, there's some topics, I'm just gonna say it, like abortion. Um, 
I have a personal opinion about abortion and it, it really, I believe it's biblical based and it's that life is important and I'm not one that can choose to um, take a life. Uh, God gets that say, but when I speak to people who are pro-choice, um, I need to be able to see their point of view and um, respect and honor something about their point of view. Now, sometimes with some of these issues, like abortion, we're just so not even willing to hear anything. We're not even willing because it's wrong. We feel it's wrong, So, which I, it is, in my opinion, and I believe that that's God's opinion. Um, but stop, just shut up for a minute. Stop with your mouth and open your ears and ask yourself and ask the Holy Spirit, okay, hold up. Lord, what is it that they're actually passionate about right now? And okay, human rights, that is usually the argument. Okay, I can value that. I can value that they care about the rights of people. And you know what I can even say, you know what? I appreciate that you value the rights of people. You can find something to validate them on and to agree on. And usually if you can do that, the intensity of the conversation will kind of wane and, and it'll chill. Sometimes it won't. And then what did I say before? Exit the conversation. But um, try to understand people. Just flat out try to understand people. Try to find something. Okay, so many times we are so proud in our opinions that it's, we would rather just slaughter the person and just completely shut them down than just sitting down and listening. It does no harm to just listen to someone for a minute. Now, um, you gotta be led by the Holy Spirit. Um, I believe that that's a godly perspective that I just stated. Um, honor shows restraint often too. Uh, it, it's, it's a humble position to take. Jesus did it, you know, he humbled himself to death on a cross. Like um, he was God and yet he chose to humble himself self and become a slave and a servant. Um, it's kind of a big deal. So really I'm gonna wrap it up. I feel like I, before realizing that this was around the election time, I wanted to take this a whole different direction and maybe someday I'll share more about honor because um, it's really something you think you don't need to teach on as much, but a lot of people just don't understand the, um, the importance of it or even how to honor. I mean, there's just ways you can honor um, your spouse, your kids, uh, your bosses, unrighteous um, leaders. Um, there are ways you can leave a job. There are ways you can leave a church uh, with honor or without honor. Um, there are ways to argue with honor or without honor. So honor is so much bigger than just, how do I handle a conversation with someone that disagrees with me or that is opposing me? Um, but I'm just gonna ask us right now, we're just gonna pray. We're gonna ask the Lord a question as we close. Um, and I'm gonna ask him for myself too, because I don't always nail it. I really don't. It's, it's hard in this earth suit that has feelings. Father, right now, um, I just pray that uh, you would speak to all of us. How can we grow and align with you? What, what, what I want us to ask the Lord right now is this. Lord, how can I demonstrate honor specifically to those who I disagree with or who disagree with me? And I want us just, um, as we shut our phones off and close this out, turn your phone off and let the Lord talk to you about this for a moment. Honor is very powerful. Um, a, a gentle response turns away wrath. Um, the goodness and kindness of God that leads, leads men to repentance. Honor is so kind. It's so gentle. It is so restrained. It is um, caring. It's understanding. It's also strong. But um, let's just try to be a people that shows the love of Christ and the strength of Christ, the power of Christ through honor. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. We love you so much as a church. These are fun times. God is on the move. Whatever the election turns out, like I can tell you this, um, I think I know how it's going to turn out. I have my opinions. However, if I have misinterpreted that revelation or that feeling I'm getting, it's okay because you know what, you know what my spirit is telling me? God is up to some awesome things and this is going to be the church's, fi the church's finest hour. So um, don't give up. Don't get discouraged. Encourage yourself in the Lord. He is on the move. It does not matter 
what happens around us, okay? We know the outcome and it's good, okay? And Jesus wins. God bless you.